I'm showing you how to use Doomsday Client. So here I am inside of Minecraft I'll show you how to use Doomsday. If you want a specific install and download, then I will link that down in the description below. Anyways, let's get right on, on exactly how you can use Doomsday Client. So to open up the click GUI, which is the main area, you want to press on right shift right over here. And that is going to open up this area. Now, in this massive area right here where we can find all the utilities as well as more things, um, you might first off notice that it's a bit too much zoomed in or really, really small. You can simply hold down control on your keyboard and then zoom in and out to adjust this to the scale that you want it to be. Then all of these things over here are utilities and these things up here are the basically sections that use that these utilities are organized into. You can right click on these to collapse them or uncollapse them again, as you can see. And all of these utilities, you can click on them just like so, and that's gonna, going to enable them. If they're enabled, they'll be highlighted in blue, just like that, and you can click on them once again to disable them. On most of these utilities, you can actually also right click and that'll give you a little bit of a customization menu. As you can see, some of them do have more customization than others. But one important thing that all of these customization menus have is the option to, as you can see, add a keybind. To add one, you can simply click on that right there, then press any key on your keyboard and you'll have set the keybind for that utility. You can press that again and then backspace and that's going to actually remove the keybind for you. A useful place where you might want to set a keybind is this GUI area over here. I can open this up and that's going to allow me to set a custom keybind for the click GUI, which right now by default is right shift, but you can change that to anything else if you do wish to do so. So for the rest in this area, as you might have already seen, you can also search for things right here if you're looking for something specific, as well as the fact that you have the option to go to their Discord server or their official website through these two buttons right down there. Now, this client also has the option to turn on a HUD. If I turn that on, as you can see, I'll get the Doomsday logo. I can customize this as well, as you can see, not with a lot yet, but that's because Doomsday is still in development. Soon, they're going to be adding more stuff to this HUD, which is going to be a bunch more useful information that can show up on your screen, and you'll be able to customize that through here as well. Now, moving on, we have some more areas up here. This is the modules area. We can move on to the configs. With configs, you can create, manage, and also import configs. Now, configs basically save the utilities that you have enabled, maybe something like so, and they also save the customizations that you have done to these. This allows you to create custom configs for specific situations or game modes or scenarios or things like that. And you can load these all individually through here. And as I said, you can also import these and share them with your friends, for example. Now, I did just turn on the HUD, as you can see over here. And a part of the HUD is the array list right up here. You saw that when I turned on these utilities. Now I can turn them off again. Basically, the array list displays all of the currently active utilities, apart from the HUD and the GUI themselves. Now you will notice that in my case this is quite large and then we, if that is the case we can simply come into here and make that a lot smaller if that's something I want to do. Anyways moving on we can now go over to the friends section. In here you can simply add custom friends that are going to be internal for doomsday client. So basically doomsday client friends right and you can manage these and this can be used in specific utilities that you can ignore friends or stuff like that. Anyways, we can now move on to self-destruct, which allows you to set a keybind to, as it says, self-destruct the client. Um, this works best if you're using it as an injection client. If you're using it as a fabric or forge mod, um, the self-destruct won't work completely, but you can also choose to remove the loader entirely, which I don't recommend because then you'll need to re-download it. And you can also choose to full reset the config here if that's something you wish to do. Anyways, 
as a key bind for that, I can, for example, set it to L, press on L, and now that's apparently also bound to advancements, but the client is completely gone. And that was basically that. For right now, thank you ever so much for watching, and I do hope to see you again in the next one. Bye-bye.